How an ancient royal tradition might die out thanks to Prince William's stubborn refusal to wear a tartan skirt in public. Like other male members of the royal family, King Charles has been more than happy to appear in a kilt. He was resplendent in tartan earlier this week before his Scottish coronation, and was fully kilted once again today as he visited Selkirk and Galashiels in the Scottish borders to mark Holyrood week. The royal family has deep connections with Scotland and owns several properties north of the border including Balmoral, where the royals spend the late summer and autumn, Burkhall and the Castle of May. Wearing a kilt is practically a royal duty. It seems, in fact, that Prince William refuses to be seen dead in tartan. Certainly, there have been no pictures of a kilted Wills in adulthood. His brother Harry doesn't seem to keen, either. The Prince of Wales has never explained as to why he refuses to wearing one. It might seem all the stranger given that he was educated at St. Andrews University on the coast of Fife. Prince William even had the choice to wear one for his graduation ceremony but instead, chose to wear a traditional suite with a white bow tie and black silk academic gown with a red lining. The tradition of royals wearing tartan and kilts dates back more than a century to the beginning of Queen Victoria's reign. Generations of men, including Queen Elizabeth's grandfather King George V, her father King George VI, and, of course, the Queen herself along with Prince Philip and their four children continued the custom over the years. As the Daily Mail's Richard Kay has explained, the Windsors observe a unique, if eccentric, set of house rules when it comes to how to dress in Scotland. The men wear kilts, not just on official engagements but during their off-duty moments too. Even Princess Diana, no lover of things Scottish, used to display a gesture, such as a Tam o' Shanter, to the delight of the Celtic fringe. One of the most recognizable styles of royal tartan is the Royal Stuart, which dates back at least as far as 1800, according to the Scottish Register of Tartans. Some historians have suggested that the tartan could have been worn by supporters of Charles Edward Stuart, also known as Bonnie Prince Charlie, during his failed attempt to restore the Stuart monarchy in the mid-1700s. The uncle of Queen Victoria, King George IV, wore tartan during his 1822 tour of Scotland, and Victoria later officially adopted it as the official tartan of the royal family. And King George V even tried to make it impossible for anyone to wear the tartan without the permission of the monarch, but the plaid's popularity made it too difficult to enforce such frigid restrictions. But while his attempt failed, the Balmoral tartan is reserved for the private use of the royal family. Many suggest that the pattern was created by Prince Albert in 1853 after he and Queen Victoria acquired Balmoral.
The tartan was a firm favourite of Queen Victoria, who frequently wore the pattern while in Scotland. The beloved royal tartan has remained much loved by the royal family to this day and is a particular go-to for King Charles, who is often seen wearing it. At the age of 18, Prince Charles was regularly photographed in his kilt, notably singing along with the Gordonston School Choir in Edinburgh Cathedral. Not so with William and Harry. No event is more important in the Royal Scottish calendar than the Bramer Gathering, where strong men in kilts throw hammers and toss cabers. Yet even for his first appearance in 2005, William could manage nothing more Scottish than a navy blue lounge suit while Charles was properly attired in a kilt and tweed jacket. And when Kate visited St. Andrews back in 2011, she was questioned whether or not the prince would like to wear a kilt to their wedding. She responded that he would not. Instead, William wore his Irish Guards outfit to reflect his position as Colonel of the Regiment.